Hello and welcome back to another video and today as you can see we're on F1 2020 and we're actually doing something a little bit different you're probably wondering why we're on F1 2020 and that is because we're checking out an F1 2002 mod today and basically all the classic mods are on F1 2020 because I don't believe there is any way to get the classic cars into F1 2021 so that's why we're on 2020 but you probably realize that from the title of the thumbnail obviously it would say F1 2002 mods that's why we're on here then but if we get straight into this then and have a look at the drivers and teams in this mod and I don't believe any are missing but of course there is only a maximum of 10 teams you can have in the game so there could be a couple missing but we've got Ferrari Williams, McLaren Mercedes, we've got Sauber, Minardi, Renault, Jordan, BAR, Jaguar, and Arrows. I think that's all of them. I can't think of any missing off the top of my head, but if the rest do, let me know. And we'll quickly go through all the different drivers as well. So, of course, in Ferrari, we've got Michael Schumacher and Rubens Barrichello, a duo that were together for many, many years. In Williams, we've got Juan Pablo Montoya and Ralph Schumacher. Uh, something tells me, I think, maybe their heads might be flipped around to how they should be because the helmets seem to be correct in the names so I think their heads might be the wrong way around but oh well uh, onto McLaren so we've got Kimi Raikkonen and David Coulthard onto Sauber we've got Felipe Massa and Nick Heidfeld then in Minardi we've got Mark Webber and Anthony Davidson then onto Renault we've got Jarno Trolley and Jensen Button moving on to Jordan we've got Giancarlo Fisichella and Takuma Sato and then on the BAR Honda, we've got Jacques Villeneuve and Olivier Panis. And then for Jaguar, we've got Eddie Irvine and Pedro De La Rosa. Surprised his full name can fit on the screen there. Usually there's a bit of a, a limit to how long they can be. And then finally, we've got Arrows. So we've got Heinz Howard Frentzen and Enrique Bernaldi. So you can see a couple of faces aren't changed. So we've still got uh, Latifi's face for Bernaldi. And I think one of the drivers in here, yeah, Irvine has still got Grosjean's face. So a couple of little issues here, but... Nothing too bad. I'm using the F1 2020 name changer, by the way, to actually change the names here, because, of course, you can't actually mod that natively into the game. You have to just run that program every time. But who should I drive as in this race? And I feel like I might drive as... I think I might go for Kimi. So I think I'm going to go for Kimi Raikkonen here. And, of course, you've got all of the tracks from the regular game. Obviously, you can't change that. I'm not sure which track to drive at. I'd say I'd go for Sochi, because it's the real-life race there this weekend. But, of course, they didn't race in Russia in this season, so it doesn't seem worth it to go to a track they didn't really go to. Perhaps Brazil. I think Brazil's one of those really classic tracks, isn't it? So we'll head to Brazil. I'll see you down on the grid. So here we are then, down on the grid at Brazil. So it doesn't look like the track is actually updated, but either way, I mean, the mod is still fantastic. You see, so much is updated. Obviously, all the team kit, all the cars, all the driver's helmets. I mean, if you've never modded, you cannot believe how long that actually takes to do. Like, that's actually unbelievable. Like, even that itself, just doing deliveries, takes the longest time. And that's only a small part of a big mod like this. So, really, it is super, super impressive. So then, without any further ado, let's get this race started. So, I'm fifth place on the grid. So, we've got Coulthard just in front of us. Then it's Schumacher, Montoya, and Barrichello on pole position. They held the lights for a long time there, but lights out and away we go. We've actually had a very good start compared to Coulthard. Up the gears. We're up to fourth place already as we go down towards the first quarter. We're squeezing Coulthard a bit. He's going to try to go around the outside now. Is he going to have the inside to the second half of the centre S? Yes, he does. So I've still got the inside now for this quarter. Side by side with our team at the whole race so far. Bit of, bit of wheel bang in there. I think Michael Schumacher is trying to capitalise. We're three wide now down towards turn four. Have to break nice and early. We've got a Jordan on the inside as well. So Fisichella just died for me. I'm being absolutely beaten up off the side, but we've got a really good situation with Coulthard. We've got that past Fisichella up the inside of Coulthard now. It's going to be close. Oh, I think we squeezed Coulthard off the circuit a little bit. So this has been a messy first lap. My driving has not been so clean, but these cars are so weird to drive compared to the modern day counterparts and obviously compared to F1 2021 as well. The car feels a lot more responsive than uh, F1 2021. But we've maintained grid position so far. This car is super tail happy, so much oversteer. We need to try and catch up to Michael Schumacher in front. I think we've kind of ruined uh, Coulthard's race, unfortunately. Because he, he kind of drove off the track on his own, but then I also then ran into the path of him after he did that. So I think I gave him damage. Fastest lap of the race is to Rubens Barrichello. So you can see the heads of display is all changed. So the fastest lap, the, the indicator on the right hand side for the sort of the revs and the gears. And you can even see on the actual driver tags as well, the, the yellow instead of white. To more match the graphics of that era. So, so much has been done in this mod. It's, it's unbelievable. 
and the mod only released the other day, so I'm sure there'll be updates. I'm sure stuff like the tracks will get updated and some of the little issues will get fixed as well, because I saw a couple of issues on the starting grid. I think a few drivers had their heads missing, some of them had the wrong heads, some of them were just missing altogether, so uh, a few little issues, but obviously it's only just been released. It's such a big mod. Uh, I've done season mods myself in the past. I know how uh, easy it is for a little issue to go under the radar, especially when you're trying to do so, so much stuff. This lap has been much better, uh, the pace is not too good, because uh, I've actually got them on 85, and they are seeming very, very fast right now. We're pulling away from Massa, we've got over a second ahead of Massa, but Michael Schumacher has absolutely left us in the dust, and Ralph Schumacher's ahead of him. So fastest lap for Juan Pablo Montoya then, in the Williams. 1 minute 10.1 for me on that lap. Big lock up into turn 1 once again. I'm really struggling with these cars. It just feels so different compared to the modern day counterparts. But you can see Coulthard's actually now got back in front of Massa. So David Coulthard is now the next car behind us. So we haven't completely destroyed this race, fortunately. We have a gap of around four seconds between you and the next car. towards the line, what's this lap going to be? 1 minute 9.2 So I just thought I'd uh, do one lap without talking so you could just hear the sounds of the cars but it seems like my pace is actually not too bad because we've pulled further away from Courtard. I think we have lost more time to Michael Schumacher but you'd assume that the Ferrari probably was a better car I'm coming to the end of this race now, I might do another one after this because this seems to have gone by so quickly and you probably wouldn't have seen the full race either because not a lot has happened So through the final corner, Rich picks up towards the line 1.8 seconds in front of Coulthard, so we definitely have pulled away from him. And the gaps between all the cars is so huge. Rubens Barrichello does the fastest lap of the race, but Juan Pablo Montoya brings home the victory, and we, as Kimi Raikkonen, come home in fifth position. So we finished where we started, so not too bad. And Jack Villeneuve actually getting driver of the day, interestingly enough. So yeah, this is uh, these are some of the issues I was speaking about before. You could see uh, invisible, <laughs> invisible driver there. It seems like Montoya's invisible, I think the guy in third place uh, didn't have a head, and that might have been Ralph Schumacher, so yeah, it seems like there's a bit of a problem with the Williams drivers. That was a pretty fun race, seven seconds off in the end, so uh, not too fast for me, but I did beat my teammates, so that's all that really matters. But I think I'm going to do another race, might do it in a bit of a slower car, or I might even do it in a, a faster car, I'm not 100% sure yet, but uh, yeah, I'll see you down on the grid for that second race, and then we'll end off the video after that race is done. So here we are then, this time I actually did decide to step up into a slightly better car. We're here at the Canadian Grand Prix as well, playing as Michael Schumacher. I've also turned the AI down a couple of percent, so I might slow down off the start if I uh, get too good of a start and take the lead. I might slow down and let a few cars through. But the Ferrari looks fantastic because the steering wheel, uh, the, the LCD display for the modern cars actually fits better on the Ferrari wheel than any of the others, so that actually looks really, really nice. We'll get this race started straight away then. And we've got Ralph Schumacher on pole position. Michael Schumacher is second. So it's a good day for the Schumacher family. The lights and away we go. Good start here from myself. Oh, I've had a bit of a snap though. I had to lift off the throttle. Barrichello's come flying past us. We go down towards the first corner. I've had a massive lockup as well. So I'm really struggling with the lockups into the first corners on these. I think it's the tyre temperatures potentially. But the rear is really, really solid. We've got Montoya right behind us. Barrichello just ahead. Can we try and get back up into the lead? But we've done a mass well, not even back up into the lead. We started second. We've done another massive lock up. That's allowed Montoya through this car. Actually, feels even harder to drive than the McLaren. But side by side, then with Juan Pablo Montoya down towards a very tricky section of the track. Is he going to try and hang it around the outside? He is. We've got to leave him a bit of space. But we just squeeze him out of the apex because he's backed out by that point. 
but I think Barrichello has taken the lead ahead of Ralph Schumacher, but Ralph Schumacher's back up the inside through the hairpin. So here we go, they're not down the straight. We gained quite a bit of time on the exit of that hairpin by the looks of it. I thought I could gain quite a bit on them. Schumacher's looking for the move on Barrichello. That's going to hold them up quite a lot through this chicane. So we might be able to capitalise on that if I don't mess up the chicane through the chicane then. We've done a pretty decent job almost putting it in the wall on the exit. Not quite just to perfection, but we have about half the gap to the drivers in front then. So Barrichello's hit the front now. So it's a Ferrari 1-3. Can we try and make it a Ferrari 1-2? So here we go then. We've got a really good run. Can we try and go up the inside into this left hand? They're on the brakes at the inside. We've got it way too hot though, I reckon. I've put it into neutral, in fact. I've just done an absolute... I think that was a bit of a dirty pass. I think I might have had a bit of contact with him. Although Jeff thought it was a nice move. Daniel Ricciardo's out of the session. Lance Stroller's out of the session. Norris is out of the session. George Russell's out of the session. So I'm not sure which drivers these are. Because uh, the, the, uh, the name changer doesn't seem to change for that section. For some reason. But quite a few drivers out the race. There seems to be a bit of a pile-up behind. Now my target is to try and catch up to Barrichello. He's got 1.6 seconds on me because we lost a lot of time with that dive bomb on Ralph Schumacher. I mean, it was really, really... It was a really big misjudgment from myself, to be honest. I thought I could make it stick, but again, I was just thinking about the downforce of the modern cars. Whoa, we cut that chicane quite a bit. We gained quite a bit of time on Barrichello, so you know what, I'll take it. Let's see if we can hunt him down. Fastest, yeah, I'm not surprised fastest last sector with that kind of driving. Oh! It's a Schumacher, uh, sorry, Barrichello's just absolutely gone flying through some debris there, and some of that's hit me as well, so I guess that must have been where the pileup was on the previous lap. But Barrichello just deflating some uh, some bits of front wing. I think I saw a bit off of an arrows there. So here we are then. We've closed right up to the back of Rubens Barrichello. Now it's going to be a last lap showdown between the two Ferraris to see who wins the Canadian Grand Prix. But I've just made a big mistake to the chicane. That's going to help Barrichello a lot. I'm making so many mistakes with this car. It's so it's so on edge all the time. Barrichello does the fastest lap. I do the fastest lap. After that, even though that probably shouldn't be valid because I did kind of cut like the chicane, didn't I? By uh, I was shooting it. I know I lost time from it, but still, it was still invalid. I would have thought. This is where the debris was on the previous lap, and it still seems to be there. Definitely some bits of arrows front wing there. But I think we could have lost this opportunity to pass Barrichello. I think our fir the first sector probably would have been the best chance to try and gain some time. And he's actually pulled a bit of time on me there because I made a couple of mistakes. So this is going to be close. I don't think we're going to be able to beat Rubens there, though. Got the hairpin, I really put my foot down there, we managed to catch it as well, so it seems to have worked out, we've got the slipstream on Barrichello, we're going to be in, in contention to make a move down towards the chicane, Barrichello goes a bit defensive, we still go to the inside regardless, so are we going to get out the inside of Rubens Barrichello into the chicane, into the chicane we go, Barrichello's messed it up a little bit, are we going to get the run to the line, I don't think so, but we've got a really good slipstream on Barrichello, can we do it, no, not quite, Barrichello wins, oh, nice little battle though with the AI there, that was actually that was good fun that. So poor old Ralph Schumacher still hasn't got his head, but yeah, what a good race that was. I quite enjoyed that one. It's a lot more fun than Brazil, where of course I was driving around on my own for most of it. But that's been the F1 2002 mod. It's a fantastic mod, I've got to say. There's so much, it changes so much in the game. You've got all the textures, all the handling, just so many different things. Obviously, there probably is a bit of a carryover from the, the F1 2003 mod that was made first, but even still, it's just so impressive, all the stuff that's had to be done. It takes such a long time to do all this stuff, so... Uh, as another modder, I can really, really appreciate it, and it is an absolutely fantastic mod. If you do have F1 2020 on PC, I do recommend you go and download it, because it is good fun. But I hope you guys did enjoy that video. hope you enjoyed the rest of your day. hope you're all staying safe, and I shall see you in the next one.